today's lesson is on theoretical and experimental probability. So we are finding both of those things. Theoretical, remember, is what the possibility is. Experimental is what it showed when we actually took the survey. Okay, so the table shows the results of a fair number of uh, a fair number cubed rolled 40 times. Find the experimental probability of rolling four. So experimental is what we did when we actually threw the dice. So we had 40 times that it was thrown. So the probability of rolling a four, it was out of 40. And the experimental probability of rolling a four, if we look at our chart, we rolled a four eight times. So it would be eight out of 40. Now we can go ahead and reduce that down because it reduces by eight. So we divide by eight, divide by eight. So eight divided by eight is one, 40 divided by eight is five. So the probability would be one out of five. Okay, you could change that to a percent if you wanted by dividing. So one divided by five gives us 0.2, which is the same thing as 20%. Okay, but really I'm looking at it for the one out of five. The theoretical probability of not rolling a four. So theoretical is just looking at the choices that we have. So we have six different choices. Now, this would be out of six, not out of 40, because theoretical is just how many sections we really have, okay? So it's out of six, there's six choices, we could roll six different numbers. So we want the probability of not rolling a four. So by not rolling a four, we could roll a one, two, three, five or six. So that's five different choices out of six that we could roll and not be a four. So that's my theoretical. So be careful when you're doing the rest of the homework. Um, number three says theoretical. Number four says experimental. So experimental, you're using the frequencies given. Theoretical is just using the outcomes that could be. Okay, so continue working through those. Let's go ahead and look at number five, because it's a little different. So suppose the number cube was rolled 500 times based on the results in the table. So here's my clue, based on the results in the table. So I'm gonna use my experimental probability about how many times would it land on a five? Okay, so we need to know what the probability of rolling a five is from the table. So the table, we rolled a five 12 times. And in the table, we knew we know that we rolled 40 times for those um, numbers. So 12 out of 40. We can reduce that down by four. So 12 divided by four gives me three. 40 divided by four gives me 10. So my probability of rolling a five based on my experiment is three tenths. But now I want to know what if it was rolled 500 times? So if it was rolled 500 times, what you're going to do is you want to find if this was 500 times, what, how much at the top? How many rolls would that be? Okay, so we need to know what the, um, the ratio is here. Okay, so what number times 10 is 500? Or you can take 500 divided by 10 to give you that. But if we multiply 10 times 50, it's gonna give me 500. So if I multiply three times 50, it's gonna give me my X value. So three times 50 is gonna give me 150. So X equals 150. Another way to find that out, another way of doing that, if you can't figure out what the, the multiplier is here, you could take your 
your ratio here, 3 tenths was our probability, and you can multiply it by the outcomes. So if my outcome was 500, I can multiply it. So this is just another way of doing the problem. I'll put or here. And if I multiply 3 times 500, I get 1,500 divided by 10, which reduces down to 150. So either way, I'm going to get the same answer of 150, just two different ways to work out the problem. So you're going to continue working through 6, 7, and 8 using the new chart and go back and finish number 2, 3, and four if you didn't finish those already. And then use the new chart on pizza toppings to finish number six, seven, and eight.